Coming up next, your career, how to handle a boss who says no to your advancement. Some great advice. We're talking about that today. Live from Studio 5 in New York City, this is the News at 6. Well, it's Monday. Hi, everybody. I'm Ernie Anastas, and we thank you for joining us again today. All right, you have survived the first day of the work week, but it probably wasn't easy for some of you. Whether you asked for a raise, maybe a promotion, a little time off, or maybe you made a suggestion of some kind, some of you were told no by your boss. Now, that can be upsetting and even deflating. We know that. But we're here to help you out tonight. Matt King begins our look at the best way to handle rejection at work. Cool if I come in real quick? No. So I think we should try. Are you saying we should do what? Hey, wondered if I could. Before that, I have to say no. No matter how we make our living, at one point or another, all of us experience some form of rejection at the workplace. Negative Ghost Rider, the pattern is full. Hey, Brian, I was wondering if I can get that 25% raise. Uh, Jake, the answer to that is going to be no at this time. Sometimes, Drum Associate CEO Brian Drum says no. I say no more times than I say yes. The head of an executive recruiting and coaching business, Drum, won't recommend a candidate who can't say no. It's part of the job. It's important not to say no to employee. Sadowski and Fisher attorney Robert Sadowski and his partners Andrea Fisher and Raphael Katz work in an intimate deadline oriented setting where they feel they can't afford to offend each other or their small team of employees so they avoid rejection. Being a lawyer everything's about argument compromise and finding creative solutions. We also find compromise in a barber shop on the Upper East Side where owner Enrique Peralta issues denials with concessions for the future. In dealing with personal issues, you have to have some emotional intelligence. Drum believes a manager must understand the value and the mindset of an individual employee when deciding if and how to shut them down. What if the employee gets up and quits? You know, that can affect the company. Headhunting, lawyering, and haircutting on the Upper East Side where owner Enrique Peralta issues denials with concessions for the future. In dealing with personal issues, you have to have some emotional intelligence. Drum believes a manager must understand the value and the mindset of an individual employee when deciding if and how to shut them down. What if the employee gets up and quits? You know, that can affect the company. Leaders in the headhunting, lawyering, and haircutting fields all recounted times in their careers when bosses dismissed them with a snappy, no room for negotiation, no. Your ideas can get shot down quickly all the time, and you're, supposed to, you're, you're just a peon, so you take it. All recommended trying not to involve your emotions and to remember each rejection, the smart ones and the harsh ones, for the day when you become the boss and must say no. I may make a joke about it. I may even belittle it, but it'll be all in good fun. You know what? It, you feel it, though. I mean, it hurts when you're rejected. Let's face it. Anytime you come to someone with an idea and right. they say, no, you can't do this or this is not a good idea, mm -hmm. yeah, it's easier said than done to separate emotions from sort of work. And, Mac, from the, uh, the perspective of the, of the boss, right, uh, what was the thing that you found out really stood out in your mind? People to whom I spoke said that they didn't like saying no. There are probably some bosses that do get off on a little bit and right. they do like it. But I think a lot of times it depends on the employee, how valuable that employee is uh, to you and your sort of business. Good discussion. Mac, Thanks for the story, Thank okay? You. We're going to continue our discussion right now because you know who's here? Sydney Bigelow, who is with Bigelow Tea Company, fabulous, huge organization. You're running a family business, you've been doing it for years. What a good reputation your company has. You're tuned in to being the boss, but also to employees, managers, the whole thing. What do you say? How do you handle, how does an employee handle a boss who's just holding them back and making them feel that they're not really valued? Well, no is going to be part of any business. Um, my assumption, by the way you're asking the question, is it's a no that's not necessarily logical. Mm -hmm. And if you do have someone that's feeling their boss is saying no pretty consistently and not really explaining why they're saying no, I, I really recommend for that employee to find the inner strength and really try to talk directly to that boss and explain, you know, here's how they're feeling, you're looking through their eyes, what are they concerned about? Have a personal about? meeting, sit down Absolutely. and talk about it openly. I recommended it recently to a young lady working in New York in a magazine industry and she felt she was just only getting no. Mm -hmm. And you know, she had all kinds of advice and I just said to her, you know, ask your boss, talk to them, look through their eyes, be sensitive, don't be combative, but talk yeah, about it. And it really did turn sense. it around. Uh, uh, what about trying to get friendly? Okay, some people might say, okay, maybe we'll go out, maybe we'll spend a little time together. What do you think about that approach? Is that not a good idea? Well, I do know that socializing is very important uh, in today's workplace. Uh, a lot of young people that are working for us, it's important to have that social aspect. 
And I do think there's a, a place for it. I just think you got to be very careful. You want to be real. You want to be sincere. Right. But you, you can't let your guard down. I mean, you have to be very careful. Can't drink too much. Can't say anything that could be held against you because your boss will yeah. remember everything you it, do and it's say. It's a little dicey. It's a little risky. What about coming in with some good suggestions, good ideas, either make the boss look good or make yourself look good? What about that approach? Well, I always hope that any uh, individual working at a company really should try to keep the mission first of what's best for the business, okay. not necessarily just for the boss. But I do think coming up with opportunities is a fantastic idea. I know for me, um, I have a young man that works for me. He went out on his own, researched his whole project, talked to people in the organization that are key, laid it out on the table with a real strategy on Good. how to execute. I was like, "Good, go. Mm. Yes. I love That's it. That's one way to get noticed, <laughs> right? And, and, and progress. Absolutely. But you got to think through it. But absolutely. I think that everyone should be doing that. A lot of people are also asking, at what point do you decide it's time to go? That It's just not going to work here. I have to move on. Well, I do think there is a point. If you have that luxury that you can go, I think it is important. Because if you are feeling that you've communicated to that person enough, you've even mm -hmm. maybe considered going up the line and communicating right. it, but you're in an environment where that's really not what they want to see and they're honoring a a type of style that you don't like, that's going to get into your DNA. That You're going to bring that home. That's going to change who you are. If you're seeing that happen, you really need to try to get to another place. Okay, quickly, bottom line, three or four things that you'd say you should watch out for. What should you do? To watch out for? Yeah, in terms of what you should be doing to make sure that you do progress and you're recognized. I think if you want to progress and you really want to move ahead, you've got to first, got to work really hard. You've got to keep the mission of the organization first and foremost. Right. You have to listen. Mm -hmm. Not say you're listening, but really listen. Gather data. But the last thing is also, don't be afraid to fail. Failure is part of growing and developing yeah. and moving an organization forward. Get into it, exactly. Absolutely. Lots of good luck to everybody because it's not easy out there. Cindy Bigelow, so good to have you with us today. Well, it's some very you. good, helpful advice. Thank you. Hope thank so. Thank you for having us. All okay, right. let's have a little tea. <laughs> <laughs> thank you.